1950. In this barn in Pennsylvania Amish country, auctioneer Dave Rama. You're playing a 22, to do, do, do. You're stealing it right now, 2200. Rama is busy selling off cattle to these buyers, whose bids are creating a demand curve. Sold her, $2,350. Probably none of these buyers would admit it, but there may be one who wants a cow badly enough to pay an exorbitant price, say $5,000. So let's put $5,000 at the top of our graph. With a price that's really high, the number of offers to buy will be really low. And that's the first point on our demand curve. 3,500, I think it would. Don't lose it for that. 3,500. No, 3,550. If the price is somewhat lower, you can bet there will be a few more bids. Sold at 3,550. So our next point on the demand curve. At $3,550, a few cows get bought. And as you may have noticed in your own cow buying experience, as the price goes down, the quantity you and others are willing to buy increases. Now you get down to 2,000, I could justify buying, you know, maybe four or five. Farmer Tom here would buy four or five himself. And the cheaper the cows, the greater the quantity demanded as whole families of buyers start coming out of the woodwork. I might buy a few if, if they're really good and for $1,000. As the price drops to $1,000, more and more buyers are willing to take home the heifers. And it doesn't stop there. I would buy just about every cow here at 500 And if the price drops low enough, oh, say $50, Cows would be selling to just about everyone. Well, I don't really need a cow, but... Even buyers who never dreamed they'd be part of the demand curve for cows. Yeah, I, I'd buy a cow for $50, even if I didn't need it. Yeah, I'd milk it, tie it to the backyard <laughs> pole or something. Or perhaps grind her $50 hunk of beef into a little something for the skillet. So this line is the demand curve. It illustrates that as price decreases, the quantity that consumers demand increases, which brings us to our last memory aid, demand descends. <laughs> Reading left to right, of course. Yes. 22.50, train left. Good trade. So you'll be happy to hear that's it for the cow auction. And you'll be happy to hear that's it for memory aids. P for price on the vertical leaves Q for quantity on the horizontal. Supply goes up or supply to the sky, demand descends down to the ground. Ooh, supply up, demand down. And if you don't want to take it from a cow, hey, even Nobel Prize economists never lose track of the basics. What the demand curve tells you is at each conceivable price for this thing, how many buyers there would be, how many bids there would be to buy the, the the cow or the laptop or the third baseline uh, ticket uh, for a Red Sox-Yankees game uh, at each alternative price. And the supply curve, what does it tell us? The supply curve tells you at each alternative price that might come about in this market, how many cattle would be brought to market. Again, and for the last time, the supply curve goes up because the higher the price, the more people will be willing to sell. But one last question for our Nobel laureate. Is what you've just seen enough to get the essence of microeconomics? No, because the supply curve and the demand curve have, have a job to do. It's they that together tell you what price will rule in the market and how many cattle will be sold at that price. In other words, the whole point of these curves is where they meet. 2,400 once! Where they intersect. Twice! The magic point that in economics is known as equilibrium. Solar, $2,350. Good trade. Nice buy, 211. So this is what supply and demand are all about. To create good trades, nice buys, by determining the point at which sellers and buyers can meet in the market to their mutual advantage. And it can seem like magic because the whole process seems to be guided by an unseen force, what economists call the invisible hand. But that is a subject for another day.